What if I told you that trading perplexity in search GPT like Google is the biggest mistake when it comes to AI searching? Most people still use it like a Google search, but you can actually get much better results with using just one single query. The difference is all about how you ask. In this video, I'll share six AI search prompting methods you can use on top of your existing question so you can fully utilize the potential of these smart AI search engines every time. Let's go. In this video, I'll be switching between Perplexity and SearchGPT so you can see how this method works on both platforms. For Perplexity, I'm using the ProSearch with default model set to GPT-40 model and ChatGPT Plus for accessing the SearchGPT features. Note I've turned off the memory and custom instruction setting to make sure the results are unfiltered. The first one is what I call debate analysis method. Basically, it forces the AI search engines to go beyond the surface level analysis and add different contrasting views. So you will get a more complete picture for a certain topic to inspire your own thinking. It works particularly well when you need to understand multiple perspectives on some emerging trends or controversial topics. First, we have the base questions such as what are the trends in a certain topic? And then in the same prompt, ask it to analyze key findings or trends in this topic. And for each one, we request to have contrasting views and this is the most important. For example, let's say I'm searching for the latest trend in the topic responsible AI. So for normal storage, you can see it gives me the key trends happening under this topic like governance and regulations ethical framework, addressing bias, which is good, and with the source. But now if we add this to the prompt and ask it to include the contrasting view for each point, you will see the response will have much more depth. Although the points are still similar, you can see now it adds the key development for each one and also the multiple viewpoints. Like for ethical framework, the debate is mainly around how to balance ethical considerations with business objective. So you can quickly get a sense where the tension is going on for each one. And it works great, particularly if you're not familiar with the topic. And so you understand both sides rather than just getting factual information or assuming you will get them automatically from the AI search engines. And this method not just works for trend related questions, you can apply to any types of questions. So you can always get contrasting views for each key finding and it definitely makes a big difference. Probably you're using AI search engines as part of your content creation process to do research and get our insights. I want to share a valuable resource from HubSpot about creating trustworthy content. It's a playbook about navigating EAT in the AI era. I put it in the description for you to download for free. This playbook reveals the strategies that help HubSpot achieve remarkable results in search performance by creating experience-rich, authoritative content that meets Google EAT standard while also sharing practical tips for the executions of these strategies. I particularly their narrow and deep strategies, which is the approach for smaller teams to build content authority without extensive resources. It's practical and speaks directly to the common resource challenges that most businesses face today, showing how to achieve better results by focusing deeply on just a few core topics where you have real expertise. I recommend you download this in the description below for free. And thank you Hotspot for sponsoring this video. All right, the next is the blind spot method. Whenever we're searching online, we looking for a solution or finding information to make better decisions. And this is why AI search engines is so helpful because it helps you analyze information faster and identify potential risks. So these method aims to identify factors that might not be immediately obvious to you, but could be important for your better decision making. First, we present a decision question such as, should I start a YouTube channel? And then we quest for long-term impact analysis like three years, five years or even 10 years, and then ask for overlook hidden factors. For example, I have a decision question, is it good to move to a new country at 30? Without using this method, you will see the response is still good. Perplexity will automatically put different sources like YouTube, Reddit, and mention both the benefits and challenges like career opportunities, having a fresh start, challenges like culture adjustment, need time to build up network. They are still helpful response. But if we use this prompt framework and request it to consider the impact in five years and hidden factors, we are forcing it to think from long term. And so the response you can see we focus more on the five years impact. And you can see now it will first mention personal growth and enrichment. 
Even for building social network, it now frames it as an upside rather than a downside as from the previous prompt, and also the positive impact for families that have kids because of the long-term impact. And what's more amazing is the hidden factors which we won't get in the first prompt, such as the healthcare system, visa requirement, and these are real challenges but people may overlook. So just having this small tweak to your prompt will give you a much more comprehensive view and help you to look beyond just the short-term impact for better decision making. So definitely try this method for whatever decision question you have and which you need to have some factual information to back up. The next, which is one of my favorite, that is the trend tracking method. Unlike getting the contrasting view for a trend or topic, it focuses on comparing data from different time periods. And so to summarize you a picture on how a certain topic evolves over time, and you can identify which trend is just hype and which is really an ongoing trend. It avoids outdated information so it works best for curious about topics that change fast. First, define your research topics and time frame. I would suggest using a broader topic and not too niche, and then ask it to compare the current trend with the time frame you specify, like six months ago, one year ago, and finally summarize the future predictions for you. For example, cybersecurity is definitely a topic that is evolving fast, and I want to quickly understand the key involvement in this topic. So in a normal search, I just ask about the latest development in cyber cybersecurity. You can see it will give you the core areas to explore like AI-driven threats, ransomware, cloud security, and they are still good as it gives you the ideas on the key areas and the certain trending topic. But if we use this prompting method and force it to compare how cybersecurity evolve or change over time, like a year, or you can use six months if you want, recent development and a future prediction, this time you will see the response will be so much better. It starts with previous trend like the raise in ransomware, hybrid work challenges, until recently the rise in AI in cybersecurity, to the latest feature predictions like AI-driven attack, quantum computing, which is definitely on trend now, zero trust, and even give you a summary table. And so that's why I like this method because instead of just getting some generic topic or areas, it helps me to understand the topic more completely, identify which are actually the most recent trend or which is just noise. And so I can always focus in the right direction. This method works particularly well for research topics that are evolving fast, like technology trends, market developments, industry changes. I like this method because the results will always be better as it clearly shows me the progressions of the key events and help me to spot the changes easily. The next one, learning path creation. As growth marketers, we need to constantly upskill ourselves as technologies just change so fast. Perhaps it's the technical skills, soft skills, academic subjects, but the information is just too overwhelming. So this method will show you the clear progressions and give you directions on whatever the skills or resources are needed for learning purposes. First, specify your learning goal, perhaps learning a hard skills, and then request it to be broken down by different learning levels, and also to include relevant skills tools, courses, certifications. The last step is optional. Sometimes the AI search engines will just automatically include that for you in the search results. For example, let's say I'm learning UX. In normal search, I may just ask it how to learn these skills. It will give you a basic approach like understanding fundamentals, enroll courses, learn practical skills. I would say these are not bad, but still the path is not clear enough if I am an absolute beginner. So now when we ask it to build a learning path for the particular skills and group by beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And then you can see the results will be much more detailed and for each level have a clear learning objective, like beginner level, learning fundamental principles, learning wide framing, and to the intermediate level to enhance proficiency, learning advanced user research, and to advanced level about design leadership with links to course and certifications. And this way, it's like having a clear roadmap instead of just random directions to achieve your learning goals. Of course, you can even ask it to give you a reasonable timeline and it works for any types of skills, even language, 
business or creative skills. The next that is using search operators, and this is super useful. Probably you may have used search operators on Google. There are special commands that help to filter search results to make it more precise, but you can actually use them on AI search engines as well. And this makes them even more powerful combining with the AI search capabilities. Basically, for most of the search operators, they work well on the AI search engines, and in particular, the three search operators are used the most. First is the file type operators to search for particular types of files, such as PDF files. Another one is site operators to search for results from a particular website, such as some authoritative websites or domain ending with edu, gov, org, which are usually primary sources for academic research, official reports with their bias. And the last type is day range related, after, before, so you can filter results within a particular time frame. And you can also combine with the Boolean search operators like and or not, and they all work well on perplexity and search GPT. For example, I'm searching for a technology trend outlook and using the contrasting view prompting method we just talked about. We can now add the operative file type to just filter the PDF files, and then you will see it will just pull resources of PDF files like this one, the report from McKinsey, and all the PDF file sources. And the best thing is it will present the search results as we discussed with the summary of key findings and also contrasting views. Another example is I'm designing whether to apply remote work policy for my company. And then using the blind spot method, we can add this site operators to just filter the source from domain ends with edu, gov, or org to make sure the source are less biased. And now you can see the sources are all coming from institutions like the US Bureau of Neighbor Statistics and this detailed report from the European Trade Union Institute um, Stanford report. So the search results will be even better now because now you're requesting it to pull from particular authoritative sources and present the results with the prompting method that we discussed. This will make a huge difference. If you know all the authoritative sources for your industry, definitely use it. So you can thoroughly improve the search results quality. Another way is to use the day range. Let's say I'm learning everything about machine learning. And so using the learning path creation method, I can then add after and before it with the year and month. So in this case, it's last year until this November. And this way, I can always make sure the results are the most recent one. You can see the source are all within the day range I provide. Sometimes you may find the date is out of range from what you request, simply because it always reference the first published day, but not the last update date. So keep this in mind. For now, I find this works better on perplexity than search GPT because of its more diverse source of information than search GPT. And to take a step further, you can even use formatting options to make sure AI presents you the search results in your desirable formats, such as a table, review metrics format, or even a structured report format. Just be creative here. Then this one is the fact checking method. You know, one of the most common challenges when using AI search engines is hallucination. And I must say every AI models will hallucinate, but just to what extent? Though there are ways to minimize that in our prompt, and this method will force AI to find supporting claims and primary sources for verification and not just simply interpret the fact from what it understands. First, you present your claims such as 90% of startup fails in the first year, and then request AI to find you the primary sources and for statistical evidence. For example, I have this claim, our brains are adaptable during periods of uncertainty. And then I will add this to the prompt and ask it to find the direct quotes from primary sources and to list the statistic with dates. Of course, you don't need to copy the exact wordings, just use your own wording is fine, but you get the idea. And now you will see it will pull direct quotes from sources that have mentioned this claim. For this case, that is a source from MIT, how the brain deals with uncertainty. And that is an authoritative source. It also finds statistics with a day so you can and make sure this claim has evidence to support and if the date is recent, which is so important. So for this claim, you can see it says it's likely true given what it finds. Now there is another method which is even more simple and is one of my favorite. For any types of claims, you just add this to the prompt. Is it true? 
and then it will immediately force AI to find the supporting evidence from sources for you. Like in this case, I'm verifying if 80% of ChatGPT users never touched the powerful features for productivity. You will see it will find some sources about ChatGPT usage, though it says the exact figures is lagging, and this statement is plausible without enough support. So using this method, you will quickly understand how likely a statement or claim is true or not. Of course, you still need to fact check yourself, and it is a must whenever you do online search, but this prompt would definitely save you so much time. Personally, I use that a lot, and it also works perfectly on perplexity, so make sure you use it. All right, these are the prompting methods you can start using right away. And you realize it's all about how we think and approach the problems when we're using the AI search engines. And you don't need to copy the exact wordings in these prompts. Just understand the logic behind and customize your own. There are actually two more powerful prompting frameworks I personally use for better decision making. And I share these along with detailed examples in my community. You will also get all the prompt templates I share on my channel to create your own version. If you're interested, check out the link in the description to join. And be sure to check out this video about the powerful AI prompting hacks if you haven't done yet. I'll see you next time.